Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. Okay, I've got an unusual video for you today. But before I get into it, the last video I did, the big reveal, it got a reaction, let's say. The vast majority seem to agree. I'll be doing a video featuring your comments on that one very shortly. And you know, look, when I say it's part of the plan, I'm saying they are playing to a script. It doesn't mean that this or that is unavoidable. You just don't allow yourself to get dragged along with it because so much is about getting the people to respond, to react. Anyway, I'll talk about that in the comments video. Now, in this video, I want to go back. I want to go back to the Queen's funeral and this email someone sent me the other day. It's a strange one. Now, you know I've been saying they are following a script. It's not necessarily a fixed script. I'm sure it's variable as it goes along to fit the situation as it plays out, but there seems to be some form of desired outcome, and much of it seems to be following some form of biblical perspective, I believe. Some say it's happening naturally, some say it's deliberate, it's forced in some way, and this is coming from the control freaks who are Luciferians from the dark side, in my opinion. And with that in mind, it's a well-known biblical theme that Satan is the counterfeiter, okay? There's a saying that God creates and Satan counterfeits. The concept here being that in many stories, Satan fools people by creating counterfeit versions of what God naturally created originally. Satan is the counterfeit God. He attempts to imitate everything God or Jesus created or did. Now, Queen Elizabeth II, she died on September the 8th. Now, there wasn't much said about it at the time, but September the 8th is also the day that the church celebrates the birth of the Virgin Mary, okay? So we have the announcement of the Queen dying on the very same day of the Holy Queen Virgin Mary's birthday. So we have that crossover first. It was interesting that there was a lot of talk about the Liz Trust meeting the Queen a couple of days before the announcement of her death and how that the images of that meeting might have been photoshopped Usually, of course, those meetings are filmed as well, but no, only photographs, leading to many people saying that she had already died prior to that date. Now, is it possible that they announced the death on this date to coincide with the date of the Nativity of the Virgin Mary? You remember the video I did about all the people queuing to pay respects to the Queen in her resting place and how it was like false idol worship as they were bowing their heads. Anyway, then another interesting connection between the Queen's death and the Virgin Mary is the funeral of the Virgin Mary, which is depicted in these old paintings, old images. It says it's called here the Domitian of the Mother God. It says here it celebrates the falling asleep of the Virgin Mary, the resting place. And as you can see, all of these old paintings that go back hundreds and hundreds of years. You can see the Virgin Mary dead, Jesus above her, people around her. But look at the bottom of many of these pieces of art. You see two people at the bottom. One person is trying to reach out and touch the coffin. And then on the other side, there is an angel that comes along to physically stop him from touching the Virgin Mary's coffin by cutting his hands off. Now this is apparently about a non-believing Jew who didn't believe the Virgin Mary was dead and wanted to check to see if she was still alive. Another story states that he wanted to check to see if she was still a virgin. But anyhow, in these old artworks, he is stopped by an angel that cuts both of his hands off. Now, can you see how these images tie in with the reports of the man who attempted to try and touch the queen's coffin? He was arrested, you remember, he was thrown to the ground and rushed off. Here we see, man arrested for touching coffin. And nearly every report, if you go looking into these reports of this story, and you'll see that all of them emphasize that he went to touch the coffin with both, with both of his hands. They always state this, which again, it coincides with the Virgin Mary guy in the paintings who went to touch the coffin with both of his hands, both of his hands then getting cut off by the angel. 
Here we see the same reason given as well from these old paintings, but now in today in the newspapers. Man who appeared to grab flag draped over Queen's coffin did not believe she was dead. Caught his. He expressed the idea that the Queen is not dead and that he approached the coffin because he wanted to check for himself. It says here, same reason, okay? But the only difference is that this was a Muslim guy and not a Jew. So they kind of flipped that around. So you have the Queen who died on the very same day as the birth, the nativity of the Virgin Mary. And then at the funeral or resting place, a man attempts to touch the coffin of the Queen with both hands and is aggressively stopped. Just as in the old paintings of the Virgin Mary's funeral, where a man goes to touch the coffin to check if she's really dead or not, but is aggressively stopped by an angel who cuts both his hands off. It's just two strange links, and it's kind of, they were kind of bugging me. Is this a coinky dink? Maybe it is. Or is it staged? Very few people, if anyone, I believe, would actually notice this. So it makes you wonder, if it is staged, is it being done for their own benefit? Are they just trying to replicate what happened to the Virgin Mary, draw connections between the two. Like I said before, the people queuing up to go and visit the queen was like idolatry, worshiping a false idol. And are these connections put there to try in their minds maybe to improve the authenticity of a counterfeit king or queen that they have produced? So, you know, as stated in the Bible, it is stated that Jesus is the king of kings, the one and only true king. Satan is the enemy and Satan counterfeits everything God, Jesus creates. So the queen and now the king, the royal family, who are steeped in Freemasonry, are these not the counterfeit kings and queens that people are being, as we can see in the cues, people are being drawn to falsely worship? And to authenticate these false kings and queens, they attempt to replicate the originals as having the queen die on the Holy Queen Virgin Mary's birthday. And this guy touching the coffin, just as in the painting of the Virgin Mary's funeral. And this being put out then through the fake stream media, which as I've said before, seems to be there not to report on the news, but to create and manufacture the public's consciousness to construct their mindset and control how they view the world around them. Another thing is also the phrase Queen of Heaven. You will see this image very much associated with the phrase Queen of Heaven. Now the Virgin Mary is sometimes called the Queen of Heaven. It's a controversial opinion as there is no scriptural basis for this in the Bible. On the other flip side of this, the Queen of Heaven is mentioned in the Bible, but it's usually associated with the name for Gaia, Mother Earth, or many sky goddesses, Isis, Ishtar. The Queen of Heaven is a Babylonian goddess wife of the false god Baal, also known as Moloch, or Baal Moloch, a Canaanite god associated with sacrificing children. And the Queen of Heaven was the wife of this false god that angered the real God because the people worshipped them as false idols. So you have two concepts of the Queen of Heaven, both the complete opposite of each other. It seems to me that the scripture uh, represents the Babylonian Queen of Heaven married to Moloch. Uh, that's the one that makes more sense. So is that the one that these people are worshipping? And then of course you have the whole virgin thing going on. I mean, Queen Elizabeth I was known as the Virgin Queen. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth II was a virgin when she got married. Princess Diana was a virgin when she married Charles. I mean, they even did a medical check to make sure she was, I believe. They went to those lengths, apparently. I was watching uh, one of Israel Dai Govira's videos yesterday, and he was talking about Princess Diana and artificial insemination. And apparently, if you are a virgin and you are artificially inseminated and then have a baby, you are still technically a virgin afterwards. Therefore, that would be a virgin birth. Although it wouldn't be an immaculate conception, it would be an attempt at imitating that, creating a counterfeit virgin birth. 
Okay, I mean, that's getting a little bit out there. I know I'm going too far down the rabbit hole, I suppose. But you know, this is just some of the thoughts going around in my head and I'm sharing them with you. I hope you can make sense out of it. It's just someone sent me this email and it got me thinking and this, this is the result of it. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for listening and come and subscribe to hugotalks.com and I'll see you later.